everlasting Father, I thank you for this time in your word. Let your counsel prevail. Speak to us like only you can. Express yourself this, this morning, everlasting King. Let our heart be stead to follow through. In Jesus' name, amen. You will notice a lot of the things that I do, a lot of the times that I engage you, I teach. I don't just try to encourage you, I teach. And, and there lies the challenge with when you consistently listen to a teacher. Because a teacher begins to impress upon you things that you are supposed to know. And based on what you know, things that you are supposed to do. And so every time you listen to a teacher, you need to ask, ask yourself two questions. You need to ask yourself, number one, what did that word say to me? That's a very important question because it is very easy to listen to a word and say that was a word for everybody. That was spoken to all of us. It doesn't help you. It doesn't bless you if it's for all of us. It blesses you when it becomes for you. So you listen to a teacher and then you go back and you say, okay, so this was what part of that word, if not all that word, that was for me. When you isolate the part that was for you, then you go to question number two. You then say, what is my response? And that's why I want to quickly pause before I go into God's thoughts this morning. If you don't answer the second question, what is my response to the word? And then based on that decision, you then make certain changes in your life. You make certain, um, 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 you include certain things or you exclude certain things. You engage certain activities. Then you will enter into what we call the dissolution of knowledge. The dissolution of knowledge is this. Have you ever been there before where you see somebody, maybe you are studying math mathematics, and you see somebody solve a problem on the board? And as he's solving the problem, you go, hmm, that's easy. I, I think I get that. He solves another one, you go, I think I get that. And then they give you a question to solve, and you go, um, where do I start from? Did he put it here? If you've been, been there before, yes, it's called the disillusion of knowledge, where before you have engaged it, because you now know it, because you have now become aware of it, rather than put it that way, because you have now become aware of it, you think you know it. You don't know it until you engage it. The only proof of knowledge is that we see it working in your life. Either you are practicing it or the fruit of it is beginning to become displayed in your life. In the Greek, the word knowledge, amongst the different words used for it, is either gnosis or ginosko. There's also a big gnosis and the others. But ginosko speaks about an intimate knowledge. The Jews actually use the word ginosko to mean, to mean like um, sexual intercourse. This is a knowledge beyond the, the ordinary. It's a knowledge beyond the surface. The only way you can have that knowledge is when you receive God's word and you respond to it. Do you know there is a difficulty here? When you receive God's word and you don't respond, you don't, you don't say it, uh, you don't go, okay, this has been spoken to me. Now this is what I will do to, uh, to engage the word. And yet you keep listening, but you don't, you don't keep doing. You harden your heart. You will get to a place where you will even want to do, and it's not difficult. You would have hot-wired your brain to hear and not do. See, everything you consistently do or not do becomes a habit. You, it's, it's a hot wiring. You are rewiring the hardware of your system. And so even when you now want to change that, you will notice it's difficult. And so before I share with you what I'm going to share with you now, I want to encourage you. If you followed me all week, go back to your notes. Go back to what we have shared all week and ask yourself, okay, so what is my response? What are the changes? What, what things do I need to focus on? Have I started practicing this? All right? And then carry that thought into this morning. This morning, the Lord awakened me and said, tell my people, think to think with me. Tell my people that they are not stranded. They need to think with me. Let me say it again. God says to tell you, think with me. Isaiah, let me show you something in the book of Isaiah. If you have your Bibles, go there with me. In the book of Isaiah 1.18, Isaiah 1.18 says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Do you understand the gravity of this statement by God? He's saying to man, he's saying to you, Come, let us reason together. Now, you need to appreciate the gravitas of this. You need to picture who is asking you to come. This is God Almighty. This is the one that measures the universe um, um, with the span of his hand. This is the one that can carry and does carry all the oceans in the cusp 
of his hands. This is the one that created all that is and will ever be. This is the one who has no beginning. He has no end. The beginning began um, in him and when everything has ended, he will still exist. He is the existence of all existence. This is God Almighty that is saying, come and reason with me. It means then the capacity to be able to contemplate reasonably at a level with him Definitely not completely at this level, but at a level with him, it, which is phenomenal, has been given to you. If God is saying, come, let's reason together, it means that he is saying to you, I have solutions. Don't just quit. Quit just asking me to solve the problem. You see, many of us, we will rather just say prayer, God handle it. God handle it. Jesus take the will. And then we want to do absolutely nothing. Do you know why God many times does not favor you're not doing something? He doesn't favor you're not doing something because if he just does it for you without engaging you and working with you to do it, a lot of times when you receive it, you are unable to sustain it. The whole process of working with him to generate the concept, to generate the, the strategy, to orchestrate the event in your mind's eye. That whole process gives you the capacity. It gives you ownership of the idea, in quote. It gives you, you because you worked with him to carry through the thought, guess what happens? You are able, when, when, when it's time to implement you were part of the generating process. You will know how to implement it. So he says, come, let us reason together. I'm tempted to say this. So many of us would rather pray prayers of pure petition. And so our prayers are filled with God, do this, God, do that. God, give me this. God, give me that. That is a, if, you, if that's all your prayer is filled with, you are still operating in primary school. You need to come up to high school. You need to come to varsity. You need to graduate. You need to come to that place where, yes, you have the things you ask for. You have the things that you decree. And then you have the times where, yes, you, uh, you, you engage God to, for him to love you. That's another necessity. But you also have the times where, like Jesus, you are thinking with God. You are saying, God, there is this problem. I need to increase my income. Let's reason together. Uh, God, I'm having this challenge with my husband. I'm having this challenge with my child. Let's reason together. Do you know, right, that you are dealing with a God who, till today, you children being, but God in instituted one process, just one process. And till today, everybody being born has a different fingerprint. Till today, from one process thought of God, new ideas, new fresh creativity is still being birthed from one, just one idea of God. Can you imagine? That's the mind that is saying, come, let us reason together. There is no justification for a believer to be stranded. I know there is no work, there is no job, the income is blah, blah, blah. God is saying, let's reason together wipe the tears off your eyes sit with me tune out the world put some put some music in the background some 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 maybe some um, instrumentals in the background close everything down and think with me let me give you a scripture you know let me give you a scripture i'm, I'm tempted i'm hearing the lord say tell my people to stop praying and start thinking now let me qualify Thinking with God is, an, is a form of prayer. But he's saying, change that style of praying where you are praying like a consistent victim. You are praying like a consistent victim. We need to stop that. The, the, the believer is one with God. You can't be a victim. You can't be one with God and you are still a victim. They don't go together. A victim is somebody who is helpless, who has no option, who is just waiting for his master to just come and deliver him. No, no. The Bible calls us co-laborers with God. You can't be. He didn't say that you are working for God. No. He didn't say you have, you have been called to work for God. If that's your mindset, that's why you are struggling. Go listen to what I shared this week. He said you are a co-laborer with him. A co-laborer means he, he's with you, just like this verse. He's with you and you are working with him. Notice what Jesus said. 
that which I see my father do, I do. Notice what Jesus said. My father works. He that to I to work. So what he was saying was, I'm working in tandem with the father. It means your capacity to operate at the level of God. You can't be a co-liberal with someone if you have not been given the capacity to operate at that level. Because then you are more you are more a burden than you are a support. If you can't have the thinking capacity and the wherewithal to engage at the level that needs to be engaged for the work to be done. So what is the lesson here? Let me give you another verse and that will give you the lesson. In 1 Timothy 1.18, we did Isaiah 1.18, now this is 1 Timothy 1.18. Paul said to Timothy, this charge I commit unto you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou mightest war a good warfare. He says, I have given you prophecies. Words have been spoken. God has declared, you're going to be healed. God has declared, you're going to hit that target and exceed it. God has declared, you're going to get that job and, and, and you are going to be the CEO. God has declared, you're going to, I don't know, whatever. Whatever the expectation is, check this out. He now says, now that you have received those prophetic words, now that you have received those outcomes as, as your end point, the next step is to wage a good warfare. I've taught you before, when he says wage a good warfare, it's not saying take it into prayer. People now say it means take it into the war room. If, notice, when we say take it into, oh, I feel God. When we say take it into the war room, we are not saying take it into the place where you are on your knees and you are saying it will come to pass. I declare it will come to pass. I declare, oh God, you are a keeper of your word. Keep your word in this. No. In the natural, when you talk about a war room, a war room, there is no physical fighting that takes place there. A war room is a place of strategy. When you enter a war room, you, are, you, you see a table. If, if there is a war happening out there, you will see a table uh, that has the map with all the pieces on the map, pieces that show the enemy installations, pieces that show your installation, and you will see individuals saying, let's move this here. If we move this there, what if they counter from there? That is what a war room is. And God is saying, come into the war room. You have been called to sit in the boardroom of eternity. In a boardroom, a boardroom is not a place of, oh, single, single, praise the Lord. That is not, see, there is the place of worship. That's not the war room. You don't enter the war room to begin worship. There is, look, I understand that there is something that people call warfare praise. If you are entering into to, 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 to engage God and you are using praise as warfare, you are confusing it. Praise can serve as warfare, but you don't start praising God so that it will be warfare. You are praising God because he has gone into warfare already on your behalf. You are not praising God so that the praise in itself will become your warfare. The praise is not warfare. Praise can can work, can provoke God, and can set in motion the activities of the divine on your behalf in warfare. But praise itself is not warfare. Now, let's push on. So, when you enter the boardroom, it's a place of strategy. It's a place of, so what do you think about this, God? And God will say to you, which, which path do you want to take? Which, which direction? What would you, what, what path? And then you say to him, I'm thinking that if I did this and I did that, and then he says, nah, um, if you go in that direction, have you considered X, Y, and Z? Decide to enter into the war room concerning the areas of your life that you are not happy with and see if it will not reason with you. When he said to Paul, to Timothy, gauge might as war a good warfare. He was saying, come up with a good strategy. That's what he was saying. Come up with a good strategy. Let's engage a good strategy. If you will make the time to go into the war room with God from today, go into the war room with God from today, you will be so impressed with the ideas you will come up with. You will be so impressed with the direction you will come up with. God is saying, come, let's think together. God is saying to you, as we close 
the devotions for the week. Come into the war room. Enter the boardroom of eternity and let us engage and come out of there with strategies. Don't waste this weekend. I don't know, maybe like me, you also have a lot of work this weekend. Look, find the time to engage in the war room of God. You see, in that war room, you will come out with thoughts like, it's time to walk. It's, it's time to walk away. Or it's time to push harder. Or it's time to call up that person and ask the person for that option. It's time to call up that person and fire that person. You will come out with a clear strategy. When you are going to go into the war room with God, you need to go like somebody expecting to come out with ideas. So what do you do? You go with your writing material. I usually recommend, if you, if you enter there with your phone, right? Kill, move it to, to flight mode so that you are not in, in, in the boardroom and in the war room with God where he, you are expecting ideas and you are bouncing ideas with him. And then you are, you, you are getting WhatsApp messages, Instagram messages, and you are quickly checking. You are quickly checking. And you are quickly distracted. Nah, it's not going to work like that. Your brain will lose the trail. Because remember, when God begins to speak, it's like a wave. I, I, I wish I had time to explain it. I don't. It's like a wave. And you are catching the wave of God's thought. So, so when you get distracted, you now have to try and catch that wave again. Do yourself a favor. When you connect with that wave, stay with that wave. Put your phone, if you're using your phone, your iPad or a tablet, as against an actual book to write in. Put it on flight mode so that no messages are coming through during that period and you are discussing. So how do you think with God? The way I do it, I put the issue on the table. Um, maybe I say, okay, I want to increase X, Y, and Z in the next one week, in the next you know, two weeks, whatever. Where, do, where could we start from? Where could we start from? And you'll be shocked. Ideas will begin to flood. As they are flooding, just write them down. Some might make sense, some might not make sense. You, work, you write them down, and then you begin to engage the, the infinite mind. And you say to him, okay, so should we go with this one? Should I go with that one? As you are doing that, make sure you also pray and say, Lord, help me to not impose my bias. Help me to not impose my preference. Help me to, to not impose... Um, my prejudices um, help me to stay away from those so that, so that I can just hear the purity of your counsel, the purity of your counsel, and you will walk out of there with new revelation. You will walk out of there. You, you, you know, in that place, it might take you to a scripture. And who I've, I've, I've had this experience more than once before where I was asking him what to do about something. And he took me to a scripture. Check this out. When I checked the scripture, the scripture had a name. And all of a sudden, as I was reading, I thought the scripture was to say something to me. But I was reading, as I was reading the scripture, a name jumped out. And the Lord said, that's the person to go and talk to. He says, that's the person to go and meet. As I looked at that name, oh my goodness, as I looked at that name and I got the confirmation that that was the person, as I made the phone call, it solved the problem that I needed solved. You will be shocked. The ideas that show up when you choose to engage in thought, the infinite mind. Come, let us reason together. This weekend, from today, make the time Go into the war room. Come out of there with ideas and concepts. Engage them and see that even you hear accurately the voice of God. I know the situation might be dire. Let me say this. The situation might be dire. Reach out for help, right? But do not let your external circumstances make you feel as if you are powerless. You are not powerless. I know the situation is ridiculous now, but you are not powerless. Are you with me? Think with him. You will come out with concepts and ideas that will change your life. Amen? Amen? All right, let me pray with you. Everlasting Father, I thank you for this time. We have engaged you this morning. We have heard your call to think with 
you to come into the war room. We hear. We obey. We come into the war room. Come as we do so, as we respond. Thank you because our ears are open. Our eyes are open. Our hearts discern accurately. We respond completely to you. Father, I'm grateful. Thank you because you have answered us even before we ask. Finally, I pray for those that are burdened. I speak the wisdom needed for you to know how to cast your cares upon the Lord. For it is too heavy for you. I release wisdom that you might know how to cast that care on the Lord. For his shoulders can bear the burden on your behalf. For anyone that is sick and is watching, I release healing right now. Right now. With the simplicity of the sent word, I release healing into your body. Begin to feel better. Your breathing, your ears, your eyes, your back, your legs, your liver, your kidney, your heart. I speak to your systems, the systems of your body, uh, your, your digestive system. Somebody is having a problem with their circulatory system. I speak to it the way your blood pumps. I speak to that high blood pressure. Be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I hear an earache. Be healed. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. There is pain in your hands. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Your knee has a problem. Be healed. Begin to move it. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Your neck is stiff. Maybe it's the way you slept. Move it, move it, be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody is having a stomach problem. Oh, and the Lord is saying it's connected. Um, it's, it's connected to a bathroom issue. Be healed, be healed in the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm seeing somebody with a bleeding condition. There is a bleeding condition. Be healed, be healed, be healed. Blood condition, be healed. Oh, I'm hearing... A blood disease. It's a blood. A kabate kadula gajia. We heal you. We cleanse your blood. We turn. We 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 change your blood. That's what I'm hearing. We change your. Uh, we change your blood. I'll say it as I hear it. You are healed in the name of Jesus. You are healed. I see the hand of God going into someone's kidney. I dissolve the kidney stones. I dissolve the kidney stones. Oh, when you go to the bathroom, they will come out. I dissolve the kidney stones in the name of Jesus. You are healed. Your liver is restored. There's somebody with cirrhosis. Uh, he's saying, deal with the alcohol intake, but your liver is healed. High, um, 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 sugar diabetes, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Ah, you are healed. Go check your sugar. Is You are healed. In Jesus' name. Cholesterol issues. Reversed, restored, healed. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I'm hearing so much. Healings are taking place. Healings are taking place. Healings are taking place. Oh, someone says genotype. Oh, shalash and um, You are healed in the name of Jesus. It is so in the name of Jesus. Somebody, there is, there is, I don't know what it is. It's, it's like a, Pain in your chest, tightness in your chest. Put your hand there. Breathe in, breathe out. It is lifted. It is lifted in the name of Jesus. Oh, it, uh, yeah, it is lifted now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you because you have heard us. I give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. If you just received a miracle, check your body. If you have just been healed, check Something, oh, I'm hearing, I'm hearing a phone call. It's a contract that was taken away from you has been brought back. I heard the Lord say, a contract that was taken away from you has been brought back. Yeah, you will get a phone call. You will get a notification. It's, I'm seeing a notification. I don't know if it's a phone call. You will get a notification and the contract has been given. Um, there's somebody else the Lord is saying, apply for a contract. Yes, you are saying, but companies have shut down. 
Your business has not done a contract before. You don't know how this thing works. Hear the voice of God and respond. Go and ask them to give you a contract to supply them. Go and ask. You will get the contract. There is fa I'm seeing it as I'm seeing the favor. Go and ask. It says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Go and knock on that door. There is grace now for open doors. For open doors. I'm seeing kings saying to Esther's, you can come. Kings are saying, this is not the time, this is not the protocol, but come. But come. It is I'm seeing someone's document. I don't know what the document is for. I'm seeing someone's document being released. Someone's document. It has been delayed for a while. Someone's document is being released. It is so. It is so. I ask only one thing. As you get your testimony related to this, come on, share it with me. Go to my messenger, share it with me. There is something about sealing your testimony when you share it. It is done now. If you've been healed already as you're watching this broadcast, please type it there because I saw angels. They were going like a horde. I don't know why. What's up with today? They were going like a horde and they were ministering to people. Going like a horde. I just saw angels going like a horde. It's making me want to check whether there's something unique happening in the heavens concerning today, Friday. Angels are going like a horde. Your, your, your turnaround has come. Whenever you are watching this, connect with the same grace. It is released unto you in Jesus' name. I hope you were blessed. Remember, ask yourself two questions. What did it say to me? What is my response? God is saying, think with me. Come into the war room. Let's walk out of there with strategies. I lead prayers tonight. If you want to join me, click the link that Knox is going to put on this chat right now. Click that link. And ultimately, um, someone will send you a, uh, the, the Zoom link. Or if you have the Zoom link, Noxy, for Friday, it's okay. Just throw out the Zoom link. Um, I know it's a risk, but throw out the Zoom link. For anyone who is on this that wants to join me, I lead prayers 6.30 p.m. South African time tonight. I be leading prayers Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'll do it for another two weeks. Join me for one hour, 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m for fiery prayers that will change something in your existence in the name of jesus <laughs> um okay i don't understand people are writing stuff it is well i need to run i'm having another shoot i need to go for i have another appointment i need to prepare for but don't worry i'm doing social distancing i'm doing all my meetings online so i'm being safe please do the same be safe, wear your masks, avoid going to unnecessary locations, protect yourself and your family in as much as we stand on the word. Amen. I hope to catch you tonight in prayers. For those of you that are fasting, the, the um, Noxy, I want to say Pastor Noxy, who knows, is also going to send you the link. Um, if you want to join us in the fast, the prayer points are there. Have a lovely, lovely, beautiful weekend ahead. Oh, Please don't forget, catch me on Sunday if you can. We started a series, Who is God? Go watch part one. It will strengthen you. It will help you. Then get ready for part two. It's going to knock your socks off. And then I'm going to be asking you to start a process with me for the next 16 days. So you need to watch Sunday because for the next 16 days, we're going to, I'm going to be telling you what to do every day. God bless you, my family. Love you too. Shola, love you, all of you. Thank you for coming on. Share this as always. Write a little note. Share it. If it helps you, it will help somebody else. It will heal somebody else. Bye for now. <laughs> Bye for now. Uh, hallelujah. <laughs>